1945. The Normandy countryside presents a scene of peaceful activity. Peasants are happily engaged in their vital jobs of making the land produce once again to fill the empty larders of Mother France. Summer 1944, a grand crusade for liberation swells in an ever-rising tide, battering the bastions of oppression. The Canadian column has fought its way from the landing beaches to the interior of Normandy. The Carpiquet airfield, scene of a bitter struggle between elements of the 3rd Division and the desperate enemy, has been won. Massed armor moved to break the greatest ring of steel ever encountered in the history of battle, the closing of the Falaise Gap. The grim god of war is on the throne and reigns supreme. One year later, time and nature have changed the appearance of last year's battlefield. A country of peace goes about the job of erasing from the landscape the scars of war. Out of yesterday's ruins rise the homes of tomorrow, symbols of man's unflagging industry. Mother Nature has added her pigments to the pastoral picture. Over the Kapike airfield, she has spread a magic carpet of flowers. Against its gay background stand the harsh reminders of a war which passed this way in all its fury. sown while mighty guns still rumbled, is now ready for the reaping. To the peasant, occupation, liberation, and all things fashioned by the hand of ambitious men are secondary to the task of wresting food from the land. But plucking golden grain from smiling fields, Frenchmen remember the sacrifice which brought them peace. At their quiet tasks, they pledge anew liberating friends who passed on freedom's hope one year ago today. In the Ontario capital, the Toronto Mermaid Swimming Club have the perfect antidote for war nerves. After a long shift at the aircraft factory or in the office, what could be better than a nice long swim? One balances the other, and the result is more planes for the war against Japan. At least that's what the experts say. When the girls get together in a swimming pool, there is no time to talk scandals, so they put their energy into some nifty routines. It takes many nights away from the old knitting circle to gain the skill needed to float a perfect formation. Judging by the snappy results, boyfriends will be buying his socks from the QM stores for the duration. What? No time for scandal? Well, just a little. Rosie the Riveter and Swing Shift Sally keep a weather eye open as their sister mermaids go into a difficult number. You can never tell when a Hollywood talent scout is apt to drop into a hard house pool. If the Navy runs into any mermaids at sea, like the Queen City variety, there will be many a foot slogger want to transfer to the senior service, but quickly. Amateurs, the girls of the Toronto Mermaids Club are attracting a great deal of attention by their excellent form. Composed of several champions who hold many Canadian records, they have a brilliant future. Coached by their president, Mr. Angus Erskine, they are already a bright star in the swimming world. Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, 
200,000 people witness a great exhibition of air power staged by RAF and RCAF flyers. It is Northern Europe's greatest demonstration of flying since the Thousand Bomber Raids. Queen Alexandrina of Denmark attends the show, which is a aid of residents who were injured in the March raids against Gestapo headquarters. Jet-propelled meteors thrill the great assembly at Kastrup Airfield with all the tricks known to their veteran pilots. Spitfires add their stunts to the great display of aerobatics. Once the terror of the Luftwaffe, they now play games to thrill their Danish friends. Mosquitoes, tempests, and rocket-firing tippies also do their stuff. Queen Alexandrina thanks the promoter of the show, Group Captain Johnny Johnson, CO of the top-scoring Canadian Spitfire Wing, while dive bombers demonstrate their ability to hit the bullseye. The proceeds of the exhibition amount to over $98,000. They are distributed by a committee of Danish resistance leaders to their bombed out countrymen. So Canadian and British skymen forge new bonds of friendship in liberated Denmark. In Valleyfield, Quebec, surplus clothing of Canada's armed forces is sorted at the repair depot. It is to be sent to the liberated countries of Europe as a gift of the Dominion. Sorters work overtime to tag each garment, noting the repairs to be made by dozens of seamstresses. In the boot mending shop, thousands of boots and shoes of all kinds are put into operational condition by the cobblers. With boots in Europe drastically rationed, the gifts from Canada will be a godsend to shoeless people. As good as new, they are packed for shipment abroad. Organized by the Canadian Army, the scheme is handed over to civilian control. The distribution is carried out through UNRWA and the Red Cross. Consigned to liberated countries and Russia, the clothing and shoes will materially aid their people on the road to recovery. Germany, the fruits of a great struggle are tasted as a allied might is lined up for a grand victory parade. From the reviewing stand, leaders of the United Nations gaze with pride on the men who made success a reality. The pipe band of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders leads the Canadian Berlin Battalion in the march past. Picked from units of D-Day and the Italian campaign, the composite Canadian group represents their comrades of the 1st Canadian Army. They join their mates of the British armies in a display of military power which cracked the chances of the Crooked Cross. In the dark weeks of 1940, when the Empire fought with her back to the wall, the day of ultimate victory existed only in dreams. Today, through years of blood, sweat and tears, the British Commonwealth joins her allies in the consummation of those dreams. Canada answered the call of the mother country. Canadians stood by on the beaches of England to help repel expected invasion. When it didn't come, they trained through years for the chance to attack. Today, their job well done, proudly they take their place among the empire's mighty who stood the test and have won the right to celebrate a glorious victory.